Not so placed on record. Um, the next item on the order paper is a legislative consent motion for the domestic abuse bill. And I will ask the clerk to read the motion. That this assembly endorses the principle of the extension to Northern Ireland of the relevant provisions of the domestic abuse bill introduced in the House of Commons on the 3rd of March 2020 relating to the provisions to extend the power of the courts in Northern Ireland to try in the home jurisdiction certain sexual and violent offences which have been committed abroad, so far as these matters fall within the legislative competence of the Assembly. Thank you. And I call on the Minister to move the motion. Minister. I beg to move. Okay, thank you. The Business Committee has agreed that there should be no limit uh, on this debate, so please open the debate on the motion. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, the majority of provisions in the UK Government's Domestic Abuse Bill apply only to England and Wales. Their aim is to further improve the effectiveness of the justice system in providing uh, protection for victims of domestic abuse and bringing perpetrators to justice, and to strengthen the support for victims of abuse and their children provided by other statutory agencies. However, in addition to these objectives, the Bill also seeks to make provision to allow the UK Government to ratify the Council of Europe Convention on preventing and combating violence against women and domestic violence, also known as the Istanbul Convention. To do this, Part 6 of the Bill will extend the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the criminal courts in England and Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland to include additional violent and sexual offences committed abroad. ETJ refers to the extension of a country's criminal law to conduct prosecution of an offence which takes place outside that country and is the exception to the general principle that the criminal law usually has effect only with respect to the jurisdiction within which a crime is committed. The Istanbul Convention is focused on preventing violence against women, protecting victims and prosecuting accused offenders. The Convention opened for signature in 2011 and the UK became a signatory to the Convention in 2012. However, formal ratification has not yet been possible. The Convention establishes a series of offences characterised as violence against women. Article 44 of the Convention requires states which ratify that Convention to take extraterritorial jurisdiction over these offences to enable prosecution of its nationals and those habitually resident in the state when they commit one of these offences anywhere in the world. The measures in the UK Domestic Abuse Bill will allow for formal ratification of the Convention by including the necessary extraterritorial jurisdiction provisions for England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Giving effect to these requirements of the Convention will allow relevant offending behaviour to be prosecuted in our domestic courts when it occurs wholly or partly outside the United Kingdom, as long as the offender is either habitually resident in Northern Ireland or a UK national. The courts here currently have extraterritorial jurisdiction with regard to a number of offences, including forced marriage, female genital mutilation, sex offences against children, murder and manslaughter. Provision is also being sought in the Domestic Abuse and Family Proceedings Bill currently before the Assembly to include similar provision for the new domestic abuse offence. The Westminster Bill prescribes further offences for Northern Ireland that need to have ETJ provision in order to comply with the Convention. The list of violent and non-consensual sexual offences is contained in Clause 61 Part 3 of Schedule 2 to the Bill. While the ability to make these changes is within the legislative competence of the Assembly, the Executive has considered it appropriate that these amendments are enacted within the Westminster Bill. The provisions will cover all three jurisdictions of the UK and will enable the UK Government to ratify the Istanbul Convention. Although it would be possible to legislate for the provisions through a bill here in the Assembly, that would take more time and, then, and legislating this UK Bill will ensure that the UK as a whole is in a position to formally ratify the Istanbul Convention at the earliest opportunity. We did consider using the domestic abuse bill here in the Assembly, but like Scotland, we concluded that the most effective option was to approach these UK-wide requirements through a single UK bill. In addition, the Assembly bill will not reach completion until after the Westminster bill, thereby preventing UK ratification of the Convention until a later date. The provisions relating to Northern Ireland set out the offences which, if committed abroad by a UK national or a person resident in Northern Ireland, can be tried in the courts here. These represent the equivalent offences in Northern Ireland to those being added for England, Wales and Scotland, except in relation to domestic abuse and stalking. ETJ provision for the proposed Northern Ireland domestic abuse offence 
is contained within the Domestic Abuse and Family Proceedings Bill currently before the Assembly. I intend to introduce a stalking bill to the Assembly later this year, and it too will contain provisions for prosecution of offences which occurred overseas. However, in the meantime, the UK Government considers that the offence of putting people in fear of violence, contained in the Protection from Harassment Northern Ireland Order 1997, and the inclusion of sexual and violent offences, is sufficient to meet the requirements of the Convention and allow for ratification. The UK Government, the Scottish Government and the Executive believe that it is preferable to legislate for the UK in this single bill. I appreciate that the Assembly's preference is to legislate on Northern Ireland matters where possible, and indeed that would be my own default position. However, in this case my view is that it is preferable in the interest of an appropriate and timely process, and given the UK-wide requirement for ratification of the Istanbul Convention, that these relevant provisions which fall within the legislative competence of the Assembly should be considered by the UK Parliament in order to ensure the UK is in a position to ratify the Convention without delay. Members will have seen that the Justice Committee's report on the motion endorsed this view. For those reasons, I am asking today that the Assembly would support the terms of this legislative consent motion. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chairperson of the uh, Committee for Justice, Paul Giffen. Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, again, I welcome the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Committee for Justice in the debate today. Uh, the Department uh, did write to the Committee in April, setting out the details of the proposed LCM uh, for the Domestic Abuse Bill that had been introduced at Westminster. And while the majority of the Bill's provisions apply only to England and Wales, it does include provisions to allow the United Kingdom Government to ratify, as the Minister has outlined, the Istanbul Convention. As members will be aware, this is the Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic uh, Violence. In order for a state to ratify the Convention, they must have extraterritorial jurisdiction in place for a number of specified offences. That is, that they must ensure that national laws can be used to prosecute nationals or those habitually resident in the state uh, when they commit one of the offences overseas. The specified offences are serious offences that include psychological violence, stalking, physical violence, sexual violence, including rape, female genital mutilation, forced abortion and forced marriage, uh, as just some examples. The courts in Northern Ireland already have uh, ETJ, extraterritorial jurisdiction, which I will refer to from here on for the sake of time, in relation to a number of the specified offences, such as FGM, forced marriage, trafficking and sexual offences against children. They do not, however, have ETJ for a number of sexual and violent offences. The bill, therefore, includes ETJ provisions for a range of offences in Northern Ireland for which this LCM is needed. Not all the required offences are covered by the Westminster Bill. ETJ provision for the proposed Northern Ireland domestic abuse offences is included in the Domestic Abuse and Family Proceedings Bill, for which the Justice Committee is currently undertaking the committee stage scrutiny. In addition, a stalking bill is scheduled for introduction later this year, uh, which again, uh, the Minister has indicated, is expected to include ETJ provisions until these offences become law. The UK Government considers that inclusion of the offences of putting people in fear of violence and sexual and violent offences to be sufficient to allow for ratification of the Convention. The Committee considered uh, the Department of Justice's written briefing at its meeting on 30 April and agreed that an oral briefing from the Department uh, was not required, although the Committee was content in principle with the proposal to extend the necessary ETJ provisions in the Domestic Abuse Bill to Northern Ireland by way of an LCM. It sought confirmation from the Department of Justice that it would not interfere with the Domestic Abuse and Family Proceeding Bills or delay in any way the passage of that important bill through the Assembly. The committee noted the confirmation uh, provided by the Department of Justice that the LCM will have no impact on the Domestic Abuse and Family Proceedings Bill and will not affect its passage through the Assembly at its meeting on 4 June. The memorandum laid by the Department of Justice on 26 May was also considered on that date and the committee agreed that it was content with the proposal to extend provisions in the Domestic Abuse Bill relating to extending the power of courts in Northern Ireland to try in the home jurisdiction certain sexual and violent offences which have been committed abroad to Northern Ireland by way of an LCM. So, Mr Speaker, I can therefore confirm that, as set out in the Committee report, the Committee for Justice supports uh, the Minister of Justice in seeking the Assembly's endorsement of the legislative consent motion. Speaking um, briefly, just as a member of the House, um, there's been 
the, the comments around the extraterritorial jurisdiction uh, has come up in the committee consideration stage um, of the domestic abuse bill, and the minister has referred to that, um, and it also was going to arise in the stalking bill. Um, and it, it is a, an area of law uh, that I am uh, favourable and amenable to in terms of offences that are created overseas. But there is some debate being raised as to the competence issue. I, I note the Minister is saying it is within the legislative competence of this Assembly. Um, the Attorney General, um, who leave office uh, next week, uh, is flagging up um, question marks around the legal competence of the Assembly to deal with this issue. Um, he quite ably um, articulates the viewpoint that the, the United Kingdom Parliament, as being sovereign in all things, um, can pass legislation in this respect that would not be challenged in court, but does question the legal competence of this Assembly and refer back to relevant legislation in 1920 that set up the, 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 the Parliament at the time. Um, uh, as to the confines of this assembly legislating in this area. So it is one that I think we do need to explore. And um, I suppose in that respect, uh, it's to alert the minister that I anticipate the committee, when we can uh, complete our consideration stage, this is something that we're going to be flagging up around the competence issue um, in respect of extraterritorial jurisdiction. Um, because we do need to, to bottom that out um, to ensure that if we pass legislation in this area, that it will stand up to any potential test that may arise in the, the court system. Um, and, and so I just put that on the record today, but we will be formally following this up as part of the committee consideration stage, and that is without prejudice to any views as to whether or not the committee supports the extension of, of these type of offences that are committed overseas. And my own view is that that is something that we should be doing, but I just want to make sure that legally we are within our remit to do that. So on that, I will conclude. Thank you, Mr. Tembury Speaker. I call Linda Dillon. My August, privileged can call you. Just to, to echo the sentiments of the Chair, the Committee obviously are supportive and our party and myself are very supportive in terms of the ETJ, particularly given that we have a land border here and many incidents may take place on a night out in dock between people who live in Newry. So for, for me, I think it's extremely important that we do have this in place. However, as the Chair has outlined, the Attorney General did raise some concerns around the competency issue, and I think it is essential that we negate any possibility that we would put in place legislation that will not actually have competence. So I would just plead with the Minister that she go and look at that, see is, are there issues around that, could there potentially be legal challenge to this. And also the Attorney General did highlight how it could be dealt with in terms of, of what could be done in Westminster to deal with this issue, and I think that we should also look at that. So if, if something needs to be done, either in Westminster or in this chamber, then we need to ensure that is done, because this is something that all of the committee spoke in support of, and I'm sure that there aren't isn't anybody out there that wouldn't be keen to ensure that if something happens outside this jurisdiction, whether it is across the border or whether it's on holidays or on honeymoon or wherever that happens to be, that we can ensure that the victim has some redress in terms of, of dealing with the issue and in terms of the perpetrator being dealt with within this jurisdiction. So if the Minister could respond to that, if not if you're not able to fully respond today, we understand, but I would think that it's important going forward that we have a full response to it. Bradley. Mr Speaker, again I would like to echo the words uh, from the Chair of the Committee and just to put on record that the SDLP have consistently and repeatedly been calling for the ratification of the Istanbul, Istanbul uh, Convention since 2012. And it is therefore important that we do all get behind this today and support it. I do take the point um, made that there does appear to be a question mark surrounding the competence of this Assembly as opposed to Westminster, where there is no dispute on this LCM and the vehicle that can be used today. However, um, for our own domestic abuse bill that uh, should come through the floor of this Assembly sooner, hopefully rather than later. The question mark has been raised and now is possibly a good time to get that aired because nobody wants to see any delay in bringing either forward. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call Doug Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I'll, I'll be very 
brief, and, and, and I welcome uh, the Minister bringing this forward. Um, it's difficult to see anybody not being in favour of getting this legislation in place to be able to support victims of domestic abuse, but I guess it's really, really uh, important that we scrutinise this because the last thing we want is to bring in legislation uh, that, that doesn't work. Um, I'm fearful that many of us may well be by when you raise an issue that people think you're just bringing in a delay. Um, uh, it still would do it a huge disservice uh, if we didn't raise the issues uh, that are concerning. Um, I absolutely um, support, as does the party, uh, the LCM, which allows us to take clause 60 and 62 of the Westminster legislation um, covering e ECJ um, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, but, but it's right and proper, and I, and I know I'm repeating what others have said, it's right and proper. We do look at what the Attorney General has said to us. Um, I have one concern about legislation competence arising from Clause 10. Um, so it is really important uh, that we put that to bed uh, and ensure that we have got this uh, absolutely right, because if we don't, we'll end up with a legislation which doesn't work for uh, the victims. Uh, and the victims must be important here. And I'm in no doubt whatsoever, none at all, uh, that the Minister will, will look at this in great detail uh, and be able to report back to the House and to Justice Committee. Thank you. I call Kelly Armstrong. Thank you, temporary Deputy Speaker. Um, I would also like to thank the Minister for taking a practical and proactive approach to the Domestic Abuse Bill. There are many people and families across Northern Ireland who are extremely grateful for the Minister's focused approach on an issue that is far too prevalent in homes across Northern Ireland. The Domestic Abuse Bill reintroduced to Westminster on 3 March included provision for the whole of the UK. It is right, therefore, that the Minister is making best use of resources and the time available by legislating through the UK Bill, as it means that the whole of the UK is in a position to formally ratify the Istanbul Convention, as has been mentioned by my colleague in the SDLP. Uh, Mr. Temporary Speaker, it is appropriate that we endorse the extension to Northern Ireland of the relevant provisions of the Domestic Abuse Bill. Um, this will extend the powers of the courts here to try certain sexual and violent offences that have been committed elsewhere outside of the UK. This includes offences for such as forced marriages, sex offences, murder, manslaughter. And I, having worked with an organisation that some of you may know called Invisible Traffic, it is vitally important that we are able to prosecute offenders who are from here for the crimes that they do elsewhere. Um, I had the privilege of being in a room, actually in, a gal in the Long Gallery here in this place, when I heard from a lady who had been taken out of this country by her partner. Um, what she didn't realise was that when she was plied with drink and drugs and convinced to sleep with her partner's friend, that this was the start of her being put into prostitution and used and, and uh, raped ongoing for up to five years. Um, she then escaped and was able to come back to Northern Ireland, but so did her partner. And because it was outside of this country, nothing has happened about that. And the person is living with the scars of that every day. She is safe now, thanks to organisations that work with people who, ha who have managed to get away from their abusers. So I would hope that this House can think about that woman and other men and women out there who are going through this, who are taken out of this country to be abused, and some have been taken away to be killed. It is right that we send out a clear message to abusers that this is nowhere you can hide. Thank you. I call Rachel Woods. Thank you, Mr. Temporary Speaker. Uh, the LCM that we're debating today relates to the domestic abuse bill currently progressing through Westminster, and it's been described as a once in a generation opportunity for our government to ensure all women are offered proper, proper protection and the vehicle through which the UK government hopes to ratify the Istanbul Convention on Preventing Violence Against Women. So I too welcome this and how it relates to the work of the Assembly's Justice Committee in considering the development of our own legislation here in Northern Ireland at this time. As other members have alluded to, the Justice Committee was briefed by the outgoing Attorney General around his concerns that Clause 10 of our Bill would fall outside the competence of the Northern Ireland Assembly, and he referred to legal opinion that deems Clause 10 as purporting to change the domestic law of a country outside the UK in which domestic abuse occurs. The Committee, I'm sure, is going to look into this issue of ETJ in more detail, but I would like to ask the Minister today for some clarity. The AG confirmed last week that the legislative method for introducing ETJ would be through a bill in Westminster. He confirmed that this would give the Assembly competence 
Indeed, Clause 61 of the Domestic Abuse Bill in Westminster appears to make this provision for Northern Ireland. So can the Minister confirm if this LCM addresses the competence issue of Clause 10 of our Bill, or does she engage to, uh, intend to engage with those working on the Westminster Bill to ensure that this issue is addressed? The 8th of June this year marked the 8th anniversary of the UK Government signing the Istanbul Convention on the Protection of Women and Girls from Violence, and he added, is still not ratified, which is extremely disappointing to say the least. So we must make sure that government protects survivors of abuse, including access to refuge and welfare for the cre and the creation of a firewall between support services and immigration control, which is particularly important for those who have insecure immigration status. Not only are they at risk to being reported to immigration authorities, but also if they have no recourse to public funds, they cannot access support through refuges, floating support or housing support and are extremely vulnerable. This is a horrific position for anyone to be in, and failure to provide protections for such victims is a contravention not only of CEDAW, but also of the Istanbul Convention. I have already asked the Minister for Communities what measures are in place and what specific assistance is available for people who have been affected by COVID and have no recourse to public funds. But I am also appealing to the Minister of Justice, the Minister of Communities and the wider executive to enable those in such difficult circumstances to be able to leave an abusive household or relationship. And I welcome the work of the Step Up Migrant Women Coalition, Amnesty and the cross-party group of MPs lobbying the Westminster Government to do something about this. I also note that the Westminster Bill includes the creation of a domestic abuse commissioner and a statutory duty for local authorities to provide domestic abuse support. It also includes other provisions aimed at supporting and protecting victims and survivors. And this begs the question as to why our bill does not include such measures. Is our bill not as a comprehensive approach towards legislative provisions as our counterparts are doing in theirs? I note the Minister's comments that she would like to review how certain measures such as protection orders and notices will work in England, and I note her assurance that she will bring forward a miscellaneous provisions bill and stocking legislation to address outstanding issues. However, I also note that the draft Westminster Bill mentions the word protection 168 times, whereas our draft bill mentions the word only once. So I asked the Minister if she would be content to broaden the scope of the bill if the committee deemed an additional provisions were necessary to strengthen it. I'm fully supportive of this LCM and I hope that we can resolve the issue of ETJ, but it's also clear that there's more work to be done if we're going to get this right for Northern Ireland. There's no further members of indicator. I'll ask the Minister of Justice to conclude and wind up the debate. Um, thank you, Mr Speaker, and I want to thank all of the members who contributed um, to the debate um, this afternoon. Um, I think understandably it strayed from this particular LCM to the wider issues around the domestic abuse bill and I think that that was inevitable given that the two do um, have a degree of overlap um, in terms of both of timing and content. Um, I want to put first of all on record my thanks to the Justice Committee um, for the report that it produced on this LCM and also to the Executive for consideration of these issues. I think particularly in the case of the Justice Committee there have been a number of these LCMs over recent weeks um, and I know that they are also dealing with a significant amount um, of evidence around their scrutiny of the bill and I look forward to seeing their report on that too because I believe that it is important um, that whilst we have scoped this bill we have worked with partners um, to look at our own domestic abuse uh, uh, offence here and how we want to see that implemented, that we are open to listen um, to the voices that come through the committee and indeed to the members of the committee themselves. Otherwise, it would render the committee process, um, it would, it would render the committee process um, a, an unimportant thing and I don't think that that would be right. Um, I think it's important that where members of the committee have concerns that they are able to raise those and I am happy to work with them and to listen to them in terms of things that they feel need to be done in order to improve the legislation. I think we all share a desire to see the best possible bill come forward. With respect to this LCM, I am very pleased with the support colleagues have shown and the recognition that it is sensible that these provisions are carried in the Westminster Bill. I do note the discussion specifically regarding legislative competence and I do want to address that point because I know that it is one that we will return to um, in all likelihood at the point where we deal with our own bill because there will be um, the issue there of introducing extraterritorial jurisdiction in our own domestic offence. Um, that has been raised, as you know, by the Attorney General. The same point um, has, been raised, uh, has been raised with the committee. Um, in terms of the clause in our own bill, the Family Proceedings Bill, which is almost identical um, to the one here. The Executive and I agreed the bill for introduction, and along with the Speaker, we are content that it is within the legislative competence of the Assembly, and the same would therefore apply to these particular provisions. 
I'm content the inclusion of the harassment defence without the need for criminality in other countries is within the legislative competence of the Assembly also. The question really turns on whether it is considered that these provisions, which are legislating for behaviour occurring outside the UK, form part of the law of a country other than Northern Ireland. I don't consider that to be the case. For any prosecution to be taken forward, there would have to be a linkage to Northern Ireland, and therefore it is part of our law, um, not another country's law. In addition, similar provision is also contained within other legislation that applies locally, namely the Serious Crime Act 2015, uh, which the Assembly approved a legislative consent motion for, and also the Human Trafficking and Exploitation, Criminal Justice and Support for Victims Act, Northern Ireland 2015. And so it is something that the Assembly has agreed to um, on previous occasions. In response to the discussion which has been ongoing at committee, however, we have had further discussions with Council and with the Departmental Solicitor's Office on this matter, and all remain of the view that Clause 10 of the Domestic Abuse Bill and by association the harassment provisions covered by the LCM this afternoon are within competence. The agreement to that LCM will further strengthen the arguments in relation to what are devolved matters. Um, in addition, the trafficking and FGM legislation was done on a similar basis. Furthermore, it could be argued that the fact that Westminster are seeking an LCM indicates that they believe it to be within this Assembly's competence to legislate on these matters, otherwise an LCM would not be necessary. Any change in relation to this position would be seen as a challenge to uh, the authority of the Speaker and by virtue of that, the authority of the Assembly in terms of the matter being within our devolved competence. Um, an LCM was also sought for Scotland, which indicates that it is seen that this does lie within the devolved competence. And so I hope that that reassures members, at least thus far, um, that it lies within our jurisdiction um, to, and our competence to take these matters forward. I would ask colleagues to support this motion in order that these important protections for some of our most vulnerable people can be introduced and that the UK as a whole can meet its obligations under the Istanbul Convention. I take very seriously the issues that have been raised by members with respect to those who are taken abroad to be abused or those for whom a, a, a period of abuse begins overseas. And I think it is important that we have adequate protection um, of those people here and that they can pursue under the law in this country um, when they live here or when the person who abuses them primarily resides here, that they have the opportu opportunity to pursue this through the law in this country. And I think that that is hugely important. It is not the only support, um, and I think Ms Woods is right, it is not the only support that we would wish to give and the only protection that we would wish to give people, uh, which is why, in terms of the wider bill which will come before the House when the committee has finished its consultation and scrutiny, um, is so important. The bill um, for Northern Ireland is actually wider in scope than the bill in England and Wales, which is much more restrictive in terms of content. Um, however, with respect specifically to the issue of commissioners and the other matters which have been raised by the committee, I know that my officials will be briefing the committee in just over a week's time with respect to some of our thoughts um, on the emerging discussions that have been had um, at the committee. And it would be my hope that we will be able to work together in order to ensure that the bill that we bring forward um, will be the best possible outcome um, for the people of Northern Ireland and for those who are subject to domestic abuse and violence in this place. I believe on this occasion it is appropriate that these particular um, amendments are made in the Westminster Bill, and so I would ask again for the support of the House in passing this LCM this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. The question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Uh, contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Uh, I would ask members to take a raise while we change Minister, and if members may be changing and at uh, Paul Givens' request, we are changing the temporary speaker as well.